guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the our Studio Buck Show. And today is the very first of its kind at Instagram TV. Guys, I'm very fortunate enough to have brought Mira back on. Obviously, I've been doing a lot of work with her because, again, she's at one of those frequencies that I would love to vibrate at. And we just do so much. She has helped me so much with a lot of different things. And so here it is in terms of... That specific IGTV that I recently had done, and what's great about IGTV now is that after or the, at the conclusion of the video, a little pop-up came and said, would you like to save this to IGTV? And I said, yeah. And I said, man, I can create a series? Yes. So now, finally, IGTV, after such a goddamn long time, and of course, after having a CEO such as Mark Zuckerberg, who really doesn't do much anyways in terms of developing his own product, um... We finally got it down packed, and I'm very excited, again, because it took long enough, because it doesn't make sense. If you do, like, a one-hour, uh, you know, IGTV Live, it just disappears. No, it's better off if you save it so you can refer back to it, and other people can go back to your IGTV and watch some of these things. But now, I've actually put it onto this one. Now, first and foremost, this is about relationships. Number two, I do apologize if the audio is a little banged up. I did not want to go through the entire 45 minutes and do all that editing in terms of post-production because, again, it's not that serious. Plus, I only get about five to ten listeners per podcast. Anyways, so, again, it ain't that serious. But if you guys want to tune into it live and uh, ask questions just as what people were doing while we were doing this, you are more than happy to follow both Amira and I. So make sure you're doing that. And without further ado, let's get right into this. Hey, so what's going on, man? Welcome to an Instagram Live, man. I hope you guys can hear me loud and clear. It's May 15th, baby. It is the day of birth of full I. I'm very, very excited about this. One, I'm going to be, of course, bringing on my wonderful... Uh, amazing coach that's out there right now. Big shout out to you. You are tuned in. I hope you guys are ready for this. And Mira is now here. And Mira, we're going to be talking about relationships. So much to talk about, so much to dive into. But I just want to say thank you to everyone who has been sending me amazing, and I mean amazing, uh, Mook, Mook Dow. She's one of my students. Uh, and, and she's in it. Beauty ships. Oh my God, man. I am 32 years old. 32 years young right now. And so I'm. Okay, hello. Okay, there she is. Okay, Mira, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you guys hear me? Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh. <laughs> One of my students is actually tuned right now. This is why I love live. So, people who are listening to me on the podcast, Guys, we are live right now. We're winging things. And Mira, man, thank you so much for coming on. For people who don't know you, tell them who you are very quickly. Well, not very quickly. You know, take whatever time, man. It's my birthday today. I can do whatever I want. You go. <laughs> well, happy birthday, our studio. So, like, I think it's very fun. So, guys, yeah, I'm, I'm a life coach. I'm actually a transformation life coach. Um, and I'm also a yoga and meditation instructor. Awesome. So, guys, again, Mook Dow, you know what? I, I know it's crazy. You're like, okay, Arsenio, who is that? So, for everyone who's listening to me on my podcast, again, it's like Mira Mook Dow. You're like, dude, that's one hell of a nickname. Yeah, so she is one of my students out here in Thailand. And uh, Mook Dow, if you have any questions in regards to relationships or anyone who is watching this right now, make sure you put them in the comment section, man. This is what we're going to be focusing on today. And again, oh my God, so much has happened this year already. I'm so grateful, first and foremost, uh, for you, Mira. You've literally had come into my life and you've transformed a subconscious mind that needed to be transformed to the umpteenth degree, okay? The limited beliefs were crazy. We got so many other things we're going to be talking about and discussing. But today's episode is about... Uh, relationships, relationships in quarantine. And so this yeah. is a little specific thing, man. It, listen, Mayor, things are falling apart out there. With, it doesn't matter if they're famous actors or actresses. People now are at home, and they need to coexist with one another. And they realize, oh, my goodness, we, you know, uh, this isn't working. We got to get divorced. And so, again, 
<sighs> I hope Mira, you can hear me. Instagram live kind of sucks from time to time, but Mira, there goes the foundation. What is it that you see right now in relationships that need, uh, 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 I wouldn't say healing, but you know what? You just take it away. We're just winging it anyways. Go ahead and get it. Okay. Well, what I've noticed, um, is that especially during, during lockdown, um, quarantine, apart from the people, the couples that are actually living together, right. And kind of getting on each other's nerves. Um, there's those new relationships that kind of just started to blossom and then lockdown happened, right? And now we can't go and visit each other or speak to each other, like, you know, face to face. And also you find a lot of people during quarantine or lockdown feeling very isolated and lonely. And so the dating apps, um, such as Tinder, for example, are going sky high. I mean, they're rocketing up there because, you know, people don't understand or sometimes what happens is that when we're, we're left to our own devices and, you know, when we're surrounded just by ourselves, we need to connect to ourselves. And that's very scary for a lot of people because a lot of people unknowingly don't really like themselves very much. You know, they also don't really understand who they are. So what, do, what, do, what, what is human nature? What is that common thing you do? You want to go outside of yourself to seek that happiness, to seek that validation from someone else rather than seeking that happiness within. Mm. Right? And so when we do that, what I've noticed is that we go over and above um, to please that other person to conform into that mold that that other person wants us to be. Mm. So, you know, we're, we're so, setting healthy boundaries, okay? And we take... Mm. No, sorry, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Yo, Instagram, you're, you're, you're yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? This, uh, I swear, Instagram, Mark Zuckerberg, you've done a terrible job. Uh, but yeah, big shout out to the guy that has just posted a comment saying you are wise on another level. I hope you're talking to me. Anyways, but no, you are absolutely right here. Um, when, it, <laughs> when it comes to relationships, I still remember what Eric Thomas said in a motivational video. He said, I challenge you to spend one hour by yourself. See, yeah. you know so much about fashion and other people's lives and the relationships, like all these famous people, but you don't even know who you are. Do I, you know what, Mira? Have you ever been in a situation like that? And for everyone out there who just can't be by themselves, what's the little micro steps they could take right now? Like, like to to know about them, to learn about them. Yeah. For me, I would say, you know, usually you get a lot of emotions bubbling to the surface when you're by yourself. And some of these emotions are positive emotions, right? Some of them might actually be quite negative. Um, feeling angry or frustrated, sad or lonely. I would say allow them to come to the surface because we've been sweeping these emotions under the rug for so long now. You know, we've been just brushing aside, carrying on with our busy lives. And this is the real time in which we can connect, connect to ourselves. You know, as soon as we start working through those emotions, one really awesome way to work through emotions is through deconstructive journaling, which is basically journaling. You know, writing down what you feel, how you're feeling that way, what is making you feel that way. And in doing that, you know, not thinking about what you're writing down, just put pen to paper and just continuously write. Soon enough, you'll find that your conscious mind, your subconscious mind is starting to take over your conscious mind. And when you go back and read all the things that you've written down, you'll be quite surprised at some of the things that come up. But that is the only way in which we're able to release these emotions. You know, it's an outlet for us. Um, so journaling is a phenomenal way to do that. Another really, really great way in which you can connect to yourself is through meditation. You know, meditation mm -hmm. is, is one way in which you can truly um, access different levels of 
the, of consciousness, you know, to become more aware. And when we can become more aware and more mindful of how we feel and what we think and our behavior, then we're able to change that. You know, I think so many of us are kind of like living in, in autopilot where we don't really understand, you know, we say, oh, but, you know, yeah, no, I feel that way. I always feel that way. Well, I always act that way in relationships. Why? Why are you acting that way? There's a deeper cause to that. that there's, there's an underlying um, reason for that. And, and that's how we start connecting to ourselves, by becoming more aware and allowing these feelings and emotions to surface, you know, and seeing them for what they are without any judgment. Wow. I love that. It sounds so much like, you know, what we've done in terms of the meditation, like having the thoughts come through and, you know, just like don't attach yourself to the thought, but just let it flow. Uh, yeah. Just got a comment from a guy down below. Big, big thanks to him. He said, what you put out is what you attract. And this goes back to the fundamentals and going back to deconstructive journaling, which is another course that both you and I just started speaking about in terms of creation. Um, so going back to what you put out is what you attract. Think about it. I want everybody to think about it right now. When it comes to relationships right now, we're focused on obviously what we don't want within a relationship. You know, there's a lot of suspicion that happens. And instead of, and rather, checking it out by you know when in doubt check it out we kind of just let things say oh no well she's coming home late at night because she's you know she's dealing with work or oh no it's there's this there's that there's that denial that sets in which ultimately festers and then boom relationships end they terminate so many other things so um and saying that going back to us figuring ourselves out in the deconstructive journaling um, you know, I've learned so much about myself in general, especially, you know, <laughs> over these last two months, because I told you, and a lot of people have experienced this at the beginning of quarantine. Oh my God. Well, you know, I feel really weird right now. I feel really sad because I don't, you know, have those human to human interactions anymore. Um, becoming aware that's number one, number two, obviously the deconstructive journaling and whatnot, but what are some other things like in terms of relationships or just building up you in general and saying, you know what? Okay. This quarantine, I'm at home. I have the opportunity to figure me out. Okay. I could do some of this deconstructive journaling, but how do I double down on that? So I think what people need to understand as well is that as soon as you start understanding yourself better and connecting to yourself, that is also what you attract. You know, the vibe, our own vibrations and, 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 you know, what we're vibing at is basically what we're putting out into the universe. And, yeah. and that's what you're going to attract. So if you're not in a very good state right now and you're feeling really anxious or depressed, those are the frequencies that actually you're sending out into the universe. And if you're sending that out, the universe is going to, it's, it's the basic law of physics, right? Like attracts mm -hmm. life law vibration so um that is what you're going to attract back into your life so you're going to attract those types of, of people into your life and that is why it's so important either to raise your vibration and also to know what you want to be certain about what you want you know um i always ask some of my clients when, when they come to me with with relationship questions and i ask them well what do you want in a partner and i always get a list of you know, physical attributes. The question is, what are you really looking for in a partner? Yeah, they can look a certain way, and that's great, you know, because that's your preference in terms of what you're attracted to physically. But other than that, what are you looking for? Are you looking for someone to grow old with? You know, are you looking for someone that you can um, spend hours and hours talking to about all types of things? You know, do you want to find someone that maybe has different um, hobbies to you so that you can learn other things. So you will only know that until you know yourself. Yeah. And I think right. what a lot of people do is that because they're feeling so lonely or they don't want to be alone, they really just want a partner and they're not really thinking about what, what type of partner they want. They just 
sort of put a mask on. So they, they, they don't, you know, they, they will say and do things to make the other person feel happy or feel wanted. So they in turn can feel happy and feel wanted. And when we do that, we're not showing our authentic selves. We're not being authentic, you know? And that's when later on in the relationship, when you guys really get to know each other and when your guard is down, the masks come off. That's when you're like, yeah, but I'm having so many issues now. Well, are you only having issues now? Or were those issues there from the very beginning but you just weren't aware of them because you were pretending to be someone else? I, man, I, oh, you know what? It, even in the world of business, and I really want to like make this, you know, for everyone out there, like you just said, you hit the nail right on the head. You said, were those, were, did all of that just happen now? Or was that all, you, you, you know, was it, like you said, under the rug? Was it over here? Were, was it the, when in doubt? Was it the, oh no, 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 that's okay. Oh, she's just doing that or he's just doing that. All of these things, they were just like little breadcrumbs that were possibly popping up over time. And so yeah. I love the fact that you actually said that because from a business perspective, you look at it right now, businesses are shutting down. I don't understand. I don't know much about the restaurant business, but think about it. If your business shut down within just one month, that means your business was soaking like it was already under a year ago. If you're not able to stay afloat now, you weren't prepared. Like the things were already going wrong for X amount of months. So yeah. I, I want to go back and retract and go back to the, the vibration. Yeah. <sighs> for anyone out there, and they, they probably ask themselves, they say, you know what? Okay, well, I'm not necessarily in a relationship, but I would like to be in one. But the people I attract to me, man, I don't really like them or they don't like me. This, it could be a number of things that are happening, right? So if we look at consciousness levels, <laughs> now, I love consciousness. And this is what we talked about in a little thing, you know, when you did a live and we did a little practice and whatnot. People, again, low vibration, that means they could be at a low consciousness level. But if you start getting up a little bit to 200, 300, 400, 500, Mira, I would like you to explain in detail that makes sense to the audience why these, why understanding the consciousness, uh, consciousness level and the vibration level, why is it important? Because I'm able to look back three years ago and see, God damn, I think I know where I was then, but now I know where I am now. And now yeah. I know who I'm attracting into my life. So yeah, how can you break that down and, you know, micro for everyone? Basically, let's, let's take it down to a very um, basic level. What is consciousness? At the end of the day, consciousness is just being more mindful, being more aware of your thoughts, of your actions, of your emotions. Um, and the higher level of consciousness you have, it means the higher level of awareness you have. So the more aware you are of yourself okay, and everything else that's happening around you. And when you're more aware of yourself, you're more connected to yourself. So you understand yourself. You understand you sort of your triggers. You don't want to fight. And that is what you're going to attract. You know, the higher you are in consciousness, it just means the frequency that you're sending out into the universe is at a higher frequency. And emotion, positive emotions, such as um, happiness, joy, and bliss, you know, calm and contentment, unconditional love, that's all at a very high vibrational level. So if you're sitting there and, and you're feeling that way and that's your level of consciousness, that is what you're going to attract based on the law of vibration because like attracts like, right? And also in terms of physics, um, you know, we're all made up of energy because we're all made up of atoms at the end of the day. So that energy is our vibration and it affects every single thing around us. Just as when we, for example, go to a really cool concert that we're enjoying. I mean, you can feel that energy in the room, right? So it's really positive vibration going on. As opposed to when you go to a funeral, everyone's really sad and, 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 and the vibration is low and you can feel that too. So that is what you're going to attract into your life. But more importantly, and this comes back to a conversation that we had privately, is that, and I had a lot of people asking me this, you know, as well. Why is it that the people I like don't like me? Or the people that I don't like are generally attracted to me? 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is this is kind of what I want to delve into a little bit. And and for everyone out there, I'm sure we've all experienced this. Okay. Why is it that the people that you're not really attracted to really, really like you? That's because you don't take bullshit. Okay. You are your authentic true self with people that you're not really attracted to. Whereas with the people that you like, you're trying so hard to please them. I over backwards, do things you ordinarily wouldn't do, and they can sense that. They can feel that energy from you. You're sending out a vibration, energy of desperation. Okay? Yeah. That's not going to be attracted to that. That's not what they're vibing at, right? They're looking right. for something else. So if you're putting that out, the universe, that's what you're going to attract back. And it's generally not going to be the person that, that, that you find sexually attractive. God. Oh, my God. Like, as you were saying that, it was just like, oh, yep, that makes sense. And yep. Oh, oh, yep, I remember that one. Yep, I kind of remember that one. Oh, my God, I remember her. I want to forget her. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Okay. So what can a man or woman do in this situation going forward? Because I'm my authentic self. I'm crazy and everything. And people are like, oh, shit, okay. But then there's always that, hey, I like you. Because I love you exactly who you are. You exactly. know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, that is who you are, right, as a person. Do you want to fundamentally change who you are for someone else? That Realistically, you don't even know if that person's going to be with you for the rest of your life, right? Oh. And always tell everyone there's 7.5 billion people i'll repeat it 7.5 billion people in the world if one person does it's not the end of the world right there is someone out there who's going to like your personality who's going to like what you stand for you know what you represent as a person you know and that in itself that is the authentic connection you know guys our studio always tells me i'm like he calls me a pa because it stands for the perfect asshole, okay? And the reason why he says that is because, you know, I tell him some of my personal stories because we're mates as well. So, and he's like, but Mira, why do you just, you know, you just say it like it is? And I'm like, the reason is because that is how I am, you know? And either you're going to like it or you're not going to like it. And if you don't like my personality, what I bring to the table, that's fine too. You know, I respect that. And I honor that of you, but don't expect me to change. And I feel for me, it's about creating healthy boundaries. And when you don't like something, for example, okay, let's take Tinder. A lot of people are on Tinder right now. There's also various reasons why people are on Tinder. Sometimes it's just maybe for a one night stand or just sex or to do anything, right? Maybe some people don't really want to have a relationship. And that's okay too. But if you want a relationship and you're chatting to someone on Tinder who doesn't and they start sexting you and you're not comfortable with it, don't go along with it, right? Just say it like it is. And that's what I do. I'm like, dude, you know what? If you're going to be sending those pictures, don't be sending them to me because I'm not that girl, you know? <laughs> and you know Okay, well, so I'm not going to mention names here, but, but, but yeah. <laughs> if you, you guys can't see me on the podcast, but I'm just kind of just blinking my eyes and oh my God, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> so, guys, this is like a real life example of, of things that I actually do. And you know what? Sometimes they won't speak to me anymore and that is okay. And other times they'll turn around like, you know what, Mira, you're right. I'm always seen as this like fat boy who has nothing else to offer besides my good looks. But I'm really, I appreciate the fact that you want to speak to me and get to know me better. So just be yourself. Not Sorry guys, she, she's reconnect right now. Uh, for those of you listening to me on the podcast. Okay, Mira, Mira, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, okay. So just be yourself. Men, stop trying so goddamn hard. Fuck, man. They're like, I am done. Listen, okay, here. 
Okay, okay. Let's say you're looking for a relationship. We're going to shift gears. I love what you just said. For the man that's trying so hard with women, uh, like, can we get to, like, the whole trying of a relationship? Now, if you're in a relationship and you're not giving it your all, that's another whole story. But for a man that really likes a woman, and he's just like, hey, I really like you. And she's like, well, I don't like you. Should he just say, ah, gone? Like, 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 okay, like, okay, for a man or for a woman, like, especially for a woman, like, if a woman is just like, oh my God, but I like you so much, oh my God, I love it because you take me to these dinners and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if, a, like, should the woman continue if the man's just like, please, uh, no, like, 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 come on, help us, help us all, right here, right now. So this is kind of cool and repetitive blood, right? We have, we've been conditioned in society to the books that we read, the movies that we watch, um, maybe even through some of the, the discussions that we have with our friends and our family and whatever, where it's romantic to chase someone who's not into you up until the point where maybe one day they will be, right? For me, I find unrequited love an absolute waste of time. If someone is not into you, right, what makes you say that they're going to be into you two, three years down the line? And then, you're still not into you. What have you done? You bloody well wasted three years of life trying to convince someone to love you. Whereas you could have been using that time to develop yourself and yourself better to find someone who's worthy of you. My thing is, when you go and chase that person, okay, who does not feel the same way about you, you feel that you're not worthy enough. So you're just gonna go and any person you feel is gonna show you a little bit of love, even if that love is unrequited. Ooh, boy, hey, I hope people hear that. I heard that it's so funny. <laughs> God, I'm so happy you said that because I'm over here listening to Eric Thomas when I'm going up all these crazy ass stairs and he said, almost just paraphrase, like, okay, so you're, you're going to try to conform and do these things, but then, oh, okay, yeah, I like you now. But he was talking from a business perspective because, of course, Eric Thomas, he's a millionaire, but he wears long shirts, he wears baggy shorts, but he has a PhD. And so in America, they judge based on credentials they budge they judge based on looks they judge based on just about everything not just america but a lot of places in the world i understand we understand blah 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 blah. but you know here you are trying to push 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 when you already got a hundred yeses over here you got 50 yeses over here you got 10 yeses over here you got opportunity over here but you're shifting all your focus to something that is not is without, doesn't have the values, and it never will. When you're letting all these other opportunities pass you by. Ooh, from a business perspective, from a relationship perspective, man, that was a smack in the mouth for a lot of you out there. Yeah. And, and so, and, and, oh, okay, go back to unacquitted. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go back to unacquitted too. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it is a very hard pill to swallow. You know, and, and I speak from personal experience. And I'm sure all of you guys out there have experienced the exact same thing, where you chase and chase and chase after someone who just either doesn't respect, give you the respect that you deserve, doesn't love you the way you deserve to be loved, you know, uh, doesn't have the, the characteristics that you're seeking in someone. But because they're showing you a little bit of love every so often, you know, we chase after them because we think, you know, that's all we're worthy of. That's all we're deserving of. You know, we feel that we're not good enough. And those are fundamental negative beliefs, limiting beliefs that we have as human beings. And until we sort all that shit out within ourselves, we're going to keep on going back, not necessarily to the same person, but people that treat us like that. Oh, oh, oh. let me talk that up again. You said we're going to keep going back to people who don't, who don't treat us with what we want. Why is it we do that again? Because ultimately, deep down, we have the belief that we're not good enough, that we're not gotcha. deserving, 
mm. and we're not worthy of this awesome relationship and love that we seek. Oh my God. Okay, so to follow up with that, <laughs> let's just say someone's in the back and they're like, yep, right here, right here, girl, that's me, that's me. Oh, you're a girl or you're a guy, whatever it may be. What now? In terms of what do you do? Um, yeah, when yeah, you, like, like for people, so this all goes back, be, mm -hmm, go ahead. Yeah, be really brave, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy, you know. I, I was I was going around in circles and chasing some guy for almost like a year and a half, almost two years, you know, it was like on and off, on and off, on and off, because every so often he'd show me a little bit of, of, of attention and, and I'd be like, Oh yay, and like a little puppy dog, you know, run towards him and be like so happy for the little bit of attention. But I took the time out to then actually understand myself better. You know, I went on this personal development and personal growth journey. You know, I connected to myself. I rediscovered who I was, who Mira is, you know, and now I know what I want in life. And it is so freeing to, it's liberating. Yeah, that's the word. It's liberating to be able to, for example, in my instance, look at that person because we're still mates, so we talk every so often, but to look at that person and to like not feel any romantic feelings towards them, you know, not feel like, oh my God, okay, he's saying this because he likes me or he doesn't like me. You know, just not to care is amazing. And I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, I mean that in terms of respecting yourself, you know, and that's where we all need to start. So we need to, to take that step. It is difficult, you know. Um, it does need a lot of guts to do that. Just take that step and, and understand it and know, know deep down that you do deserve better. And there are, there is better out there for you. Boy, I love it. I love it. I just, I just feel like there are so many women, especially that I've seen out here, um, that, you know, they're in terrible relationships with guys treating them like hell. It was a Tyler Perry uh, movie uh, recently. Uh, not recently, probably, I don't know when, but you know, there was a, a bigger black woman and this guy that was with her at the time, he was just like, come on girl, hurry up and get that up. You know, you, there ain't no one else that want you. There's no one else that wants you. You gotta stay with me. And I felt so bad. You could see the pain in her face, but then when she started losing weight, she had become more attractive for him. And then she was like, uh, like towards the end of the movie, she was like, uh, Fuck you. You know, she realized that she was now a person that loved herself. She reestablished herself. She reestablished her self-confidence. She knew her self-worth. Oh, man. Like you said, liberating, you know? Yeah. And so I think a lot of us, you know, you taught me and so many other people have taught me, and this is what's been so beautiful this year. I've been learning so much about myself in general. Um, you know, where as I could I understand, you know, not so anymore with particular people. So uh yeah, sorry guys, like Mira she, Mira's got the Wi-Fi of beautiful South Africa. Uh but nonetheless, oh my god, okay, she can hear me now. I just love to see her reaction. But yeah, I think I, I think maybe she can hear me. I don't know what's going on right now. Uh, but anyways, so Mira, oh my God. Um, in saying that story and in saying everything, what are some tips right now? Let me give you three different types of people who are in different situations. If someone's in a situation and they feel like they are not getting their all from the other individual, what are three things that they can do? And then we're going to go to two different other people who have uh, different shoes. Okay. So if you feel that you're not um, getting something out of a relationship, first is communication. So learn to communicate with the other person. And yes, it can be very difficult, but you know, we need to learn how to communicate effectively with each other. Not all types of communication needs to lead down to an argument. Okay. It's, it's possible to have, um, difficult conversations in a calm manner. So, so be able to communicate your feelings. But also, before you do 
So they're reflecting what's, what's, what we either lack or what we something missing in that relationship. You don't necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily, depending on the situation, but you wouldn't necessarily need to obtain that from the other person, right? Something, maybe something that you can pull for yourself, okay? One common thing that, that I've um, uh, experienced myself and some of my friends and my clients is, you know, feeling very sort of like, um, what is the word? Uh, you feel, sometimes you feel jealous and you tend to be a little bit clingy towards the other person, right? Whereas, and in the beginning of the relationship, it wasn't really like that, but as it goes on and on, um, you, you tend to want to spend more time with them. You don't want them to hang out with their friends anymore. Why is that? What's going on? There's something going on inside of you. So yes, communicate it with your partner. That's very important. Tell them how you feel but also try and understand why you're feeling that way because there's some lack within you, okay? There's also possibly a negative belief where you feel if you're in this long-term relationship, you guys need to do everything together. It could be a possibility. And the other thing I would do is also, you know, it's a time which you can um, discover more about yourself. So take time to understand what you like, you know, start creating hobbies and doing more of the things that you like so that you're not so dependent on your partner. Good, good. Oh, there you go. That's three hard tips for you guys. I'm going to give you one more. I was thinking about mm -hmm. the other, but that was fantastic. Here we go. How about someone who is looking to discover, they're, they're, they're like, let's say they're from a country where they're like, you know what, I need love, I need love so much, man, love is everything to me, but I can't seem to attract the right people to me. I can't uh, seem to attract the right guy or the right girl, whatever it may be. What are three things that they could develop within themselves to start making themselves look more attractive? <laughs> say that they're not doomed maybe there is something that's i've seen people get married where i was like i went back to school i went to school with some of these folks i look at them and i'm like you got a Are woman i ain't the married go <laughs> that's a negative belief there's no one out there that's doomed okay and everyone is attractive in their own way that's that's my personal opinion we have we all have preferences um like we were talking yesterday i find i found this guy who was acting on ncis las vegas get his name I, I think he's absolutely gorgeous whereas our studio is like no Mary, he's really gross so so we kind of like all have our own person, right? <laughs> true that true that true that so firstly for everyone who's listening no one's duped okay okay um okay. we are <laughs> we're all perfect beings and there's definitely someone out there for you you just need to believe that and it's that lack of belief that you have within you that's stopping you from finding that person that you connect with. It's because you don't believe 100% in yourself. Wow. Uh, okay. So let's say they start believing in themselves. Let's say they start re, you know, they start developing that self image, right? So that's, that's one thing that was really hindering me. And you know that because we did, a really amazing coaching session. Whereas, you know, we went through a bang pattern and I had to redefine who I really was and who I really see myself rather than what other people had seen me and the feelings that I had behind what people viewed me as. And now, you know, I walk around, I'm just like a God, like on the train, I'm just like, oh my God, you know what I mean? And now, since that happened, this was April, April 12th or April 11th of last month. All of that is gone. All those negative beliefs that I had about who I was, it is completely gone. People don't look at me bad. It's how I looked at myself. So let's say they establish that image. Okay. Yeah. So what are a couple of other things? Should they begin socializing or what about authenticity? Because a lot of people are like, maybe I should act a different way. Should they? No. I mean, act yourself. You know, mm. case in point, earlier on, you know, Arsenio calls me the PA of this world, the perfect arsehole. I'm just being myself, guys. Yeah. I'm just sitting 
putting boundaries out there. I'm just saying it like it is. I'm doing things that I feel um, I'm comfortable with. Um, I don't go out there purposefully hurting people. You know, that's their perception of what I'm saying to them at the end of the day. For me, it's just, you know, um, if I'm not comfortable with something, I'm not going to say or do something I'm not comfortable with. Yeah. Um, if you understand yourself 100%, if you believe in yourself 100%, that is what you're going to attract because that is, that is the energy that you're walking around with. Okay. And, and once again, I'm repeating it, but like attracts like, and you're going to attract that into your life. You just need to have faith and you have, need to have a little bit of patience and not allow yourself to just go for the next available person that's out there because you're doing yourself and that person a disservice. Damn. Oh, okay. All right. So we got the confidence building. We have the being authentic. I want to clear something up real quick and top this off. I was a guy back in 2015 that I created and I built an entire wardrobe because I thought keep women here in this country would accept me. But the fact of the matter is I didn't accept myself. So I think a lot of people need to understand that it doesn't matter what you wear. There are too many channels out there on YouTube say, oh, you need to buy this. You need to get this and wear this belt and wear, but you're still you. You're never going to be able to cover that up and mask it. And so I think from that type of perspective, like, like, what do you think about, like, what do you think about that mirror? And for people who think that, oh yeah, buying these shoes, I'm going to feel more better about myself. <laughs> no, that it doesn't work that way. Cause the cavemen, I know cavemen. I don't personally, but like thousands of years ago, there were plenty of cavemen. They didn't have shoes but they felt very good about themselves. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just trying to give you a nice little perspective. Think about it outside the box. So what do you think about so, that, Mira? On that is based on conditioning. You know, we look at like these magazines, at movies, you know, yes. uh, what people have told us, uh, books that we read. Mm. We have a perception of what an ideal body shape should look like or what, what we consider to be pretty right or attractive and and, right. and that is that is based on culture it's based on our language it's based on where we stay it's based on a whole lot of things you know who our friends are the things we watch on tv the people we hang out with all of those good things that creates what we find attractive and then we try to put ourselves in these little boxes and try to fit into one of these boxes for people to accept us but in actual fact we're not accepting ourselves and there is no right or wrong, okay? People find a whole myriad of things attractive. And some people might like long hair. Some people might like short hair. Some people might not like hair at all, right? It's, 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 it's what we've been conditioned to believe. And that, why, that is why I'm saying that every single one of you guys that's going to be listening to this, to remember that you are perfect the way you are. It's just that you need to believe that yourself. And once you honestly do truly believe that, and it takes a lot of hard work to do this. I mean, you know, I've been on this personal growth journey for years now, and I've still got so many hurdles that I still need to climb, okay? But the more we do that, the more we love ourselves and understand ourselves and be proud of who we are, despite what anybody else has to say or think, you know, that is what we're putting out there, and that is what we're going to attract back into our lives. Boom! And on that note, there it is, people. I just want to give a big special thanks to everyone who has tuned in. Wonderful comments, necessarily. Have name or anything, so apologies. But... For Prasad, my man, Carlos, you, of course, Atul, Jitin, uh, Naisha, Sadao, of course, out here in Thailand, we're about to come on, and they have tuned in to us, Mira. So, big to Mira, for any likes on specific topics, Mira and I, we love Q and A's. We love this. Specific times or anything, questions, people, questions. We will categorize them if we get a lot of them. 
but this was fire. So Mira, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wisdom. Again, guys, on the podcast, I do apologize if, you know, the audio is a little bit over the air over there, but oh boy, that was a lot. That was a lot of good things. And again, tune in to us. We're going to be talking about deconstructive journaling and all these other great things. We're going to be putting together a course, as a matter of fact. So, guys, tune in to us, whether it's on Instagram or wherever, and we're going to continue posting a lot of different things. So, Mira, thank you so much for spending your time on here. Guys, again, thank you so, so much for tuning in to this wonderful live, man. I am so grateful that I'm actually able and enabled to, to, you know, post some of these videos and now I could save them and I could rip the audio without everything being all fidgety. Again, I do apologize for some of the breakage that you happen to hear throughout the podcast. But again, IGTV Live, WhatsApp, Facebook, it's all the same. That's why Zoom always trumps. So in terms of that, guys, I just want to say special thanks so much. If you guys have any Q&As and you guys want us to answer any questions on a Q&A, we would be more than happy to do so. And again, follow me on IGTV or follow me. I'm sorry, not on IGTV. Follow me on Instagram so you can get all the updates. So until then, guys, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. I'm your host, as always, over and out.